Good morning, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Good morning. How is everybody? Happy Valentine's to all of you. Yep. At this point, everybody should have had a great Valentine's Day already. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you uh, expressed your Valentine to each other. And for you that are single, we say to you, Happy Valentine's Day, because Jesus loves you. And so do we. And so do we. So you all have a Valentine. So uh, it's pretty amazing that it falls on a Sunday. What a better way to day today than love each other and love God and just see what all God's going to do. So it's going to be a great big love fest. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we pray that you're all doing well. And I know we've had different people fighting different things and we're, we're standing with everybody. We yeah. want you to know that, that we're believing God to touch every person today in a powerful, miraculous way. And with that, before we get into prayer, we also want to say one thing that we thank God for each one of you and yeah, your faithfulness and your coming on each and every week as we're moving forward in 2021 for all that God has for us. And today we're going to talk about another key of favor, and that is love. And these are all the keys that increases favor in our life. And this is a, a really amazing subject. And I felt like the Lord really impressed upon me to really not rush through this, but really teach it thoroughly. Because once you get a revelation of favor and you start to decree it, and walk in it, it starts to bring amazing results in every aspect of your life. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And so, Sarah, take it away. <laughs> take it away and let's pray. <laughs> well, with that kind of introduction. I mean, um, take right. it away and let's pray. All right. So, Father, we just thank you that we can come before you. We lift you up high, Jesus. Be high and lifted up today in everything. Yes, Lord. We humble ourselves before you. We fix our focus on you. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to come and have your way. And we thank you, Lord, for an outpouring of wisdom and revelation knowledge of your love god we thank you for your great love we thank you lord that nothing can separate us from your love no height nor depth nor length or width or power or principality or any other created thing can separate us from your love and we give you glory and honor and praise and thanks today lord we thank you, God, that we can love you because you first loved us. And we know this because you say that you so loved us that you sent your only begotten son so that any who shall believe on you shall not perish but have everlasting life. And we thank you, God, that the fullness of life is found in your love. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for your incredible, unfathomable, almost unimaginable, abundant, overflowing love for us, Lord, that you would come from heaven to earth take on flesh, go into the womb of a woman, walk a perfect, sinless, holy, blameless life as a man for the purpose to go to the cross, to reconcile us back to you, Lord. No greater love has any man than to lay down his life for his friends. 
And so today, Lord, we say thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you that you made a way that we could be one with you, one with the Father, experience your presence, that we could be one with each other, that we could be redeemed from death, sin, hell, the grave, the devil, and brought back into the original design that you've created us to, where we are blessed with your blessing. Thank you, God, that you never leave us and you never forsake us. <clears throat> And you say in your word, I am with you always until the end of the age. So we give you thanks today, Lord. I thank you, God, for touching every person today, opening their hearts and their minds to hear freshly from you, Lord. We come to you with childlike joy and childlike faith, and we hunger and thirst for a fresh revelation of who you are. And we know that that is certainly possible. It's gonna take all of eternity to know you. All of eternity. So we thank you, Jesus, that today you're glorified, that today you're lifted up, Thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Come as only you can do. Come as water, come as wine, come as wind, come as oil, come as fire, Lord. The burning, passionate zeal, that consuming fire, that love for us, Lord. We give you thanks, God, for your passionate zeal for us that you chased after us when we were going the other way and you drew us back with cords of loving kindness. Thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, Lord. You're holy, Lord. You're holy, Lord. Have your way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so today as we are here with you, Lord, and in your presence, we just thank you for every person today. And we uh, want to just take a minute and uh, go back and review a little bit of what we've been talking about this whole series. And we started out the beginning of the year with this is the year of the open door of open doors. And we went through different doors that God's opening this year. And the first door we talked about was favor. And favor is something that God has graced to all of us. In fact, if you look in the Amplified Bible, if you will ever go into that particular version, they always put divine favor or favor right beside grace. So grace and favor are somewhat interchangeable. So God's saying that favor is something that you didn't earn, but something that I willingly <clears throat> want to give to you and an increase in your life. So today, <clears throat> let's take a look at some of the keys of favor. And we talked last week that favor can increase in our life. And when we learn what these keys are and learn how to apply them, that the favor that God's given us by his grace will increase. And then we're going to define favor again a little bit as we go each week to make sure you even understand what favor is. But one of the things that we talked about, about defining favor, and I wrote all these down for you, is favor is what God gives to us that he did by giving us Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ himself, the Bible says, is grace and favor. But there's favor that's in Christ that's available to all of us. And so what we want to talk about is this. Uh, favor makes us attractive, not only to 
other people, but causes circumstances and other situations to bow to favor. So we'll talk about that. Favor positions us, positions us to be used by God in mighty ways. Favor also prompts the Holy Spirit to act on our behalf. Favor protects us even from natural outcomes that should normally try to come against us. Favor is the kindness of God. Favor is the love of God. Favor also is not only kindness, but favor undergirds us and protects us and keeps us when normally struggles should take us further than they should. Favor can intervene and cut off the time frame of that struggle. Also, we said favor gives us divine privileges and gives us preferential treatment that we don't deserve. So God honors that. So favor also gives us divine help in the face of adversity. And we can expect the unexpected when we know we have favor on our life. Also, favor uh, can make struggles and things that should take longer become shortened. That's a good word, isn't it? Yeah. Also, favor is for a lifetime, it says in Proverbs 30. And favor is part of your inheritance and it can grow and increase in your life. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what this favor really is and we're going to explain it and what it does for you. And so, so today, I want to start out by reviewing what we said last week. We said that there are five different ways that favor can increase in our life. And we're going to talk about those five things each week. Last week, we talked about thanks and gratitude. When you have a thankful heart and you continually share your thanks with God and give him gratitude every day for all that he's done for you, for saving you, for changing you, for all the things that he does, even in difficult times, we still give God thanks. Even when we don't understand in our trial what's going on, we still know that God is working, even behind the scenes, even when we can't see it. So the Bible says it's good to give thanks to the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. In all things give thanks. That doesn't mean we give thanks for everything we're going through, but we give thanks in the middle of that struggle that God is with us and he's for us and he loves us. And we talked about last week that every day we should tell God how much we love him and thank him for his love for us. And when we do that, it causes favor to increase in our life, in our circumstance, and in our situation. And we said last week that uh, statistics show that when you have an attitude of gratitude, that you pave the way for better health, deeper relationships, and increased productivity, that God causes that to happen. Because gratitude and thanks just opens a pathway that gives God something to come into in your situation. So thanks opens it's a key to open the door for favor that favor comes into your life and blesses you and increases you and gives you the advantage in a lot of things and god blesses more and more when you do that also we said even five minutes of gratitude if you would write down daily what am i thankful for today just taking five minutes each day to do that can increase long-term well-being these this is even natural health specialists are saying that. So there is a connection, spiritual and natural, that when we do that. So we can give thanks by praise, worship. We can decree to God how wonderful he is. And we gave a psalm, Psalms 102, which you can read again this week if you have time. Just read Psalms 102, and that tells you how you can give thanks in all the different ways. All right, so today... Uh, we're going to talk about our second thing. Now, there's five things we talked about last week that help favor to increase. One is thanks and gratitude. Two 
is loving obedience. We're going to talk about that today. Three is being faithful to God, being faithful to do what he asks you to do. Then the fourth thing is the declaration. When you decree favor over your life, it's important. We'll talk about that too. And then lastly, when you have a generous heart, that increases favor. So all of those five things, thanks and gratitude, loving obedience, faithfulness, declaration or decreeing favor, and then five, having a generous heart releases the increase of favor. So we said last week that this is a time that God has designated this year of 2021 of increase of overflow of favor for those who want it. So we're going to go get it because this is what God's promising right now. It's also a time that God's releasing trust and confidence in him, a new trust and confidence in God this year. Thirdly, we said this is going to be a year of timing, of releasing things. This is going to be a year that God wants to release things into your situation that have been held back, a time of releasing things. The fourth thing that we put down this is going to be a year of miraculous provision how many can take that miraculous provision we also said that this is going to be a year of supernatural breakthrough so this year we're going to have some supernatural breakthrough every one of you and then lastly unparalleled blessings are coming this year unparalleled blessings so it's a time to release favor a time of new trust and confidence in God, a time of releasing things. It's going to be a time of supernatural provision, a time of supernatural breakthrough, a time of unparalleled blessings. All of this is an overflow of the flavor of, of flavor, <laughs> the favor of God. It's an overflow of the favor of God. And it's all here for us right now, there for the taking. So all we need to do is how to get it, how to receive it, how to decree it, and how to expect it. So that's what we're going to do in the next few weeks as we go through this. So let me share something here in the beginning too. God's ultimate favor isn't things that we have or possessions or things that God gives us, which are great. God's ultimate supreme favor is knowing him and having his presence in our life. That's when you're really walking in high favor, when you know who God really is and you trust him for who he is and you celebrate his presence every day. Yeah. And when you love God with all your heart and all your mind, that brings his presence and favor increasingly into your life. Whenever you tell God, I love you, God, with all of my heart, and I know you love me, that starts to increase his presence in your life, and ultimately, that increases favor, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So one of the things that uh, I wrote down that we need to uh, have an understanding of right before we start today about love and before we get into love, it says in John 15, uh, for we are to love as God loved us. Yeah. And what he wants us to know, we have the potential not only to love God, but to love each other the same way God loves us. And God chose to love us no matter where we were, what condition we were in. He chose to love us unconditionally. Yeah. And when we start to experience his love and understand his love, it creates an atmosphere for his favor to start coming forth in our life and in our situation. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to share with you, because God loves us unconditionally and chose to love us, he also wants you and I to know no matter what trial, what problem, what situation you're in, he is always there. He is always there working on your behalf. God is always working on your behalf. Even when you can't feel him or you can't see him, God's always working on your behalf. And he's actually never idle during a trial. 
So no matter where you're at, God unconditionally loves you. Sometimes when we're going through a trial or a test or a surprise or a hurt or a problem we don't understand or something, a sickness or whatever it is, sometimes we can get that feeling of where is God and I don't feel loved, but God will never leave you or forsake you. He always is working on your behalf. He unconditionally loves you and he will never forsake you. So when you know that, and then you know that God is loving you, even when you don't sense it or feel it, it creates a confidence in you. And then that's when you say, God, I know you're with me. God, I know you love me. Now watch this. And God, I know you favor me. And I thank you that you have, that you favor me, even though I may have messed up and even caused some of this, you still love me and you still favor me and you're still for me. So when you say that to God and you get that kind of attitude, God's favor and his presence starts to overtake you. And then you experience this ultimate favor, I call it, where you can sense his presence no matter what. Psalms 139 says, I can go down to the depths of Sheol and I know you're with me. Where can I flee from and your presence? Where can I flee from your presence? And the fact is you can't flee from his presence. And when you know his presence is with you and you just practice that presence, even in the midst of chaos and darkness and fear, sickness, doubt, unbelief, no matter what trial, when you practice that presence and choose to love God and choose to believe he's working with you and for you, even though you can't feel him, see him or sense him even, that brings increase of favor and his presence on your life even in a greater way. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I still know that he's with me. Hallelujah. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And surely goodness and mercy is following me everywhere I go. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 3119, how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you. And the word fear there means love with high regard, who love you unconditionally back because you love us unconditionally. That's great, isn't it? We love him unconditionally because he loves us unconditionally. So for our sake, he said, in all things, we're more than conquerors. So today we're going to just talk about loving obedience and how that really releases this incredible increase of favor. So let's put up our scriptures. Luke 2.52. Let's start there. Luke 2.52. And we're going to start with that particular scripture and read that. So it says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So if Jesus had to increase in favor, that means we can increase in favor. So let's do a little bit of a back backdrop here. Before Jesus came to the earth as a man, we call him the pre-incarnate Christ. Christ, the son of God, the second person of the Godhead was there with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And Christ was there before he became Jesus. He was and is Christ. So Christ stood there and represented us. We talked about this last week. But then God the Father, who knows all things, knew that once he made mankind and made Adam, he knew in advance that man was going to fall. So he knew he had to send a savior to redeem back all that man was going to lose. So Christ himself chose to be that person and said, I will humble myself and I will take on a human physical body. Even though in my deity, I'm eternal, I will choose to humble myself and Philippians 2 says he humbled himself 
and came down from heaven and became a man and took on a man and earthly images man and humbled himself and decided that he was going to, in his great love, redeem back everything that Adam had lost. But in order to do that, he had to become a man. So he never ever was not deity. He was always deity while he was here. But in his deity, he chose to lay his deity aside and take on a human body. And he became fully man because he already was fully God. So he was fully God and fully man. But what great love to humble himself and come down and take on a human body to become like us. So having done that, he had to himself increase and grow in knowledge and wisdom and favor with God and with man just like we do because he became a man. Sorry, now he was still God. God doesn't have to learn anything. God doesn't have to increase in anything because God is God. God is all sufficient in everything and who he is. But in his humanity, he humbled himself and laid that aside. So he had to actually grow in wisdom and knowledge and in favor with God. So if he had to do that, that means we should do that. And he's our example. And he had to grow. And how did he grow? He growed through learning and he grew through understanding and he grew through the things that even he suffered, the Bible says. He grew in, in things he suffered. So he suffered and he became to us our example that whatever we have to go through, he went through for us first so that we could enter in to the same things that he has. So we have lots to be thankful for today. So Jesus himself became a man so that he could identify with us, so that he could take us to where he is. So he died on the cross, took our sin, our sickness, took on our death. He took on everything and then gave us eternal life. He gave us blessing and he gave us a future and a hope when he came for us. So we're going to just discuss that. All of that is the great love that he had for us when he came. And so we should never, ever forget the great love that he brought to us. And so we're going to talk today about love itself and what is love. So let's go to our next verse in Proverbs 3 and read this. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. So here's the first thing that we want to see how favor increases. The more you remember God and his word and keep his commands, and one of his commands is love. And we're going to study about love today. When you keep the commandment of love, which we'll talk about later, he says, and don't forget it. He said, and you choose to keep this command of love, you're going to have length of days, long life. I receive that. <laughs> How about you? You receive that, Sarah? Yeah. Everybody out there receive that? He says, if you, that the condition is that you remember his word, remember his promises, and let your heart keep his commands. That's a choice. Yeah. One of his commandments is love. We're going to talk about today. And when you walk in love and keep that love, favor increases, benefit, length of days, long life, and peace, they will add to you. And if we ever need peace, we need it now. All right. And it says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. That means to wear them on the outside. Once you get them on the inside, write them on the tablet of your heart. And then he says in verse four, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So look at that. That's a powerful. If you remember the promises of God's word, you keep the commands, which we're going to talk about today. You get length of days. You're going to have a long life. 
So let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tabula of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So this is a powerful uh, section of scripture in Proverbs. And all of Proverbs 3 is powerful if you ever want to read the rest of it. But anyway, so today we're going to find out the promises. We're going to learn about the command. And we're going to see how length of days and long life and peace come to us and mercy and truth. And we're going to walk in them. And we're going to find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So one of the things that we want to talk about today before we go on is that as we study these things today we are going to talk about that increase so let's go to psalms 511 let's go to psalm 5 and we're going to put that up there but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you let them shout for joy because you defend them let those also who love your name that's a big, big statement. Those who love your name. So we love the name of Jesus. We love that he's healer. We love he's savior. We love that he's king, that he's Lord, that he's friend, that he's faithful, yeah. that he's the king. He's the source. Amen. He's, I can go on and on. He's the ancient of days, but we love his name. Be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Now we're going to see that favor is not only in us and on us, but it surrounds us. I wrote a, a sentence, and I want you to write this down, or if you want to hear it, I'll read it slowly. I wrote down, the favor of God is on me. And you could decree this every day. The favor of God is on me. The favor of God surrounds me. And the favor of God goes before me. So the favor of God is on me. The favor of God surrounds me. And the favor of God goes before me. I have access to the throne of divine favor. And in time of need, that favor comes my way. So see, when you start to decree favor and know you have favor and you expect favor, then that favor starts to surround you, protect you, and it starts to come your way in every single situation that you are in in your daily life. That's powerful. You start to decree it, you believe it, you say it, and you know you have it, you give thanks for it, you show love to God and tell God how much you love, his presence increases, favor increases, it comes on you, surrounds you, and it goes before you, and it starts to put a path in front of you to get through things that normally you would never get through in a certain time frame. It speeds everything up. Thank you, Lord. And one of the Psalms, David said, answer me speedily. Yeah. And when you know you have the favor of God on you, you can say, God, I have your favor. I have preferential treatment. So you're not saying that in arrogance. You're saying that because God's given that to you as part of your inheritance. Yeah. When Jesus came into your life, he brought favor to you. You are favored among people. You are favored above everybody else. God's favor is on you. You have now an expectation of an advantage that God will pass over other people to get to you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. God will open doors for you that no man can open when you have favor on your life. And I want you to know that God wants you to decree that every day. One, give him thanks. Two, tell him how much you love him. Then turn around and say, and thank you, God. I have your favor on my life. I decree your favor. 
and I speak your favor that it's on me, in me, surrounding me, and goes before me and is making a way for me. Woo! So when you say that, God's presence increases on your life and the atmosphere changes where you are. And I just want to really share with you that's a powerful, powerful thing. And uh, listen to me very careful, carefully. When you tell God continually how much you love him and give thanks, you become what I call, are you ready? Favor-minded. And God wants you to become favor-minded, that you know you're favored by God and you expect favor in your life. And God will help you with that. The Bible says uh, in uh, Zechariah, where, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace, grace to it. So he said, when you speak to the mountains that are in front of you, the obstacles shall favor, favor, and have faith in the favor of God that he's bringing down that obstacle and that mountain that's trying to hold you back. So when you're battling sickness in your body, say, I have favor in my life. God wants me to be well. And speak to that sickness and say, I'm favored of God. I have faith in his favor that this will not remain. And by his stripes, I am healed. But see, you're coupling favor with that. This is one of the things I have learned just recently that I have to couple favor with faith. Mm -hmm. speak the favor with the faith amen and when you speak them together those things around you must bow in jesus name amen so god's favor in my life means i will have less fear i wrote that down the more i know i'm favored the less i fear what can fear do to me if i'm favored by god it just starts to bow so you have to be favor minded when you ex Continually expect the favor of God to manifest in your life. It's very unlikely that the fear will ever outlast the favor. That's good. Amen. Fear can't outlast favor. It can't outlast faith. All right. So let me uh, put up another verse here for you. Let's go to Revelations 3.8. Revelations 3.8. Uh, let's see. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, but you've kept my word and you've not denied my name. So even when we, and God is acknowledging, this is Christ talking, even when you are in a time of little strength and everything seems like it's all against you you're in such a it's almost sometimes you almost want to laugh at the situation because it's so bad <laughs> i can't believe i'm in this i can't believe how things have gone but even when you're a place of little strength but he said because you kept my word see god is saying because you kept his word what does it mean sarah that we kept his word. What do you think that means? We obey it. What? We obey it. We obey it, but we say it. We're we continually say it yeah. saying it. We're continually saying against all the odds, God, you love me. Yeah. God, you're with me. God, I have your favor. God, I love you. God, I trust you. And you might not feel it. You might be in a difficult time, but the key is just keeping his word and saying who he is and what he means giving him thanks doing the things that we're teaching you now continually keeping means that you're practicing what he's told you to do you know practice means something that i continue to do over and over till it becomes a lifestyle now when i'm in sports, you know, I'm a sports guy. And, uh, Sarah's an athlete too. But 
you know, Sarah was a ballet dancer, so I'm sure, but you have to practice like oh, yeah. every day certain things. And when you practice it over and over, it starts to become just a part of who you are. And, you know, when I first used to dribble a basketball, I could dribble really a lot easier with my right hand, but the natural left hand part wasn't there. So it took me a lot, a lot, a lot of repetition with my left hand to finally dribble the ball with a fluid motion. But it took a lot of time, day after day after day. But eventually, and I was a guard, in basketball, that means you handle the ball a lot. And <laughs> so if, if you're going to be a good basketball guard player, you have to be able to dribble with both hands. Because if you can't dribble with both hands, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to make as many plays for your outcome. But when you can switch hands like me and dribble behind your back, <laughs> flip passes like Magic Johnson. Yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, I became good at it. The potential was there but I had to practice it over and over. And the same way with scripture, the more you practice when you're in a difficult time, when you don't feel like it, you practice, Lord, I thank you. I praise you yeah. for who you are. Thank you for your favor. You might not feel it. You might not even sense it, but you practice saying it and believing it. And as you repetitionally do this, it starts to create a lifestyle of loving obedience. Yeah. And you lovingly obey. And I call obedience a loving obedience. If you don't have love for God, it's hard to obey God. It is. You don't want to do obedience just to do it. You want to do it because you love God. Everything, when you obey God, is because you love him. And you know he wants the best for you. God, you've been so good to me. You first love me, and I love you for how you love me. And so the more you love God, anything he asks you to do, it's easier to obey him. That doesn't mean everything is easy that he asks you to do, because we're so set in our ways, in our mindset <laughs> of the way we've done things, maybe all of our life, that he might come in and say, I know that's the way you have done it, but I say unto you, I'm going to change how you're doing that and give you a better way to do it. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't feel really exciting at first. Right. It says, I'm going to tell you how to choose lo to love somebody who has hurt you. That is not natural. Nope. <laughs> and we all of our life are used to getting people back and taking revenge. But God says you have to choose to love those Love your enemies. Yeah. Love those who despise you. That is not natural. Yeah. And he's, but so you have to retrain your mind and have a time frame of repeating and practicing. All right, I'm going to pray for them. And the first time you pray for them and say, forgive them, that doesn't feel very good. It's just you're doing it out of faith, but you're doing it out of love for him and obeying him, even though you don't feel it. But ultimately, you'll become more like Christ. And Christ loved us while we were yet sinners. Mm -hmm. And he loved us when we were an enemy to him. And you will learn how to love and obey when it even goes against everything in the natural and opposes everything that doesn't make sense. But you will grow in that. But you, as you keep his word and you don't deny him, God will open doors for you yeah. in every realm of your life. You know, if somebody has hurt you or betrayed you today, the Lord says to love them, to forgive them, yeah. and to bless, bless them. them. And that's the high level love. That is the highest level of love. Yeah. And when you bless them, you know what happens to you? You, first of all, become changed to be like, <laughs> yeah. second, you experience his presence. Yep. Thirdly, you grow in love. And fourthly, you increase in favor with God because yep. God gives you more favor and will bless more things that he wants you to do in your life. 
and he will bless you in great ways. So one of the things that helps us to get into this high esteem of favor that we talked about today is number one, we always have to consider our ways. God says this through his word in Psalm 119. Uh, David said, I entreated your favor. I sought your favor with my whole heart. And then he says, be merciful to me according to your word. I thought about my ways and I turned my feet to your testimonies. Notice he says there he wanted God's favor because he knew he messed up. God, don't forget me. I love you. I ask you to forgive me. And God immediately answered David and was merciful because he had a right heart and he loved God and he chose to be willing to let God know his condition, but how much he loved God. And so uh, when we really ask God, now write this down. When we ask God, help us, Lord, that our ways will be pleasing to you. If there's anything that we're doing that's disobedient, that we know we should be doing that we're not, help us, Lord, change our ways. Help us to do things the way you want us to. Have mercy on me. Have favor on me. Help me to be obedient. Help me to treat my wife the right way. Help me to be kind to my wife. Help yeah. me to be kind to those who hurt me. Yeah. Help me to bless people. Help me to pray. Help me. May my ways be pleasing to you. Man, the Bible says in Proverbs, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's awesome. That's awesome. So say, so say it with me. Lord, Lord, help me, help me to consider my ways, to consider my ways, and help me, and help me to walk in your ways, to walk in your ways, to love you, to walk and up. obey, <laughs> and obey everything, everything that you ask me to do, that you ask me to do in your word, in your word, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In other words, we don't want any rebellion in us. That's right. No pride. We want to stay humble, teachable. And always willing to change and choose God's ways over our ways. Right. His ways are higher than my ways. His ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But we have to choose those. And when we do that, it increases favor with God and yeah. with man. The second way we increase favor is we need to heed instruction or hear instruction from God's word. It says in Proverbs 8, now therefore, listen to me, my children. You can write this down. I didn't put it in my, my scripts, but it's, but it's Proverbs 8, 32, 35. If you want to read this later after the message or zoom in later, but Proverbs 8, 32, 35, and this is a key. First, we need to increase high, into high favor. We need to consider our ways. And then secondly, a second key is you must hear instruction. So it says, now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Now watch this. Blessed are those who keep my ways. And it says, hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me watching daily at my gates waiting at the post of my doors, waiting at the post of my doors, whoever finds me finds life, and look what else, and obtains favor from the Lord. So he's saying, first of all, consider your ways and make sure we say, Father, help me with my ways to line up with the way you want us to do things. Two, let me always be ready to listen and heed the instructions in your word that you want to teach me about that's going to make me more like you and increase favor on my life and change me so that I have greater favor, amen, and greater increase of favor in everything I do and everything I say. So number one, 
We consider our ways too. We hear and heed instruction. And then here's number three. We need to get understanding. We need to get understanding. Proverbs 13, 15 says this, good understanding gains uh, favor. Good understanding gains favor. So today, what I'm trying to do, well, I'm not me, the Holy Spirit, is trying to do is give you understanding so that you increase in favor, what favor is and what favor can do in your life. So here we say, in order to increase in God's favor, I wrote this down, we must not only consider our ways, we need to be obedient to the instructions we receive. And then thirdly, we must absolutely do whatever it costs to get understanding, to understand everything God has for us. So growing in the favor of God also depends on this, that we become favor-minded. So write this down. I today am becoming favor-minded. I'm going to be a person who knows he has favor, who knows he is going to increase in favor, and is going to do everything he can to decree that favor on a regular basis. Yeah. So every day you get up, you give thanks, you tell God how much you love him, and then the third thing you do is you decree, I have the favor of God in my life. I decree favor over all the rest of my day. Mm -hmm. Today in every problem, every situation, Thank you, Father, for your favor that's in my circumstance, in my body, in my situation, no matter where I'm at. Thank you for your favor today. And you decree that, you declare that favor, and that favor is going to start to bring you special privileges, special advantages. You're going to get things that anybody that else is trying to get, you're going to get. God's going to give you perks. He's going to give you promotions. He's going to pass over people to get to you yeah. you're going to start to expect the unexpected oh i have preaching it <laughs> you're going to start to expect the unexpected you're going to start to see adversity bow its knee to you you're going to see things that should take longer be shortened because you have the favor of god on your life amen Woohoo! <laughs> you are highly favored you are chosen you're acknowledging yeah. lord your ways i want your ways not my ways yeah. i want your word not what I'm wanting. I want, I want you to teach me, train me, and I want to be willing and obedient. I love you, Lord. I expect it. I bless you, and I give you praise, and thank you right now. You are positioning me right now today, Father, because of your favor to get through this situation that I would never be able to yeah. get through without your favor. Amen. Woo, that was good. Yeah. You know, sometimes I go teaching along and then the Holy Spirit <laughs> says, enough of you, let's get into this. <laughs> you know, and see, when you stay humble before God and you say, like in my spirit right there, I was just trucking along teaching you. And I said, Lord, I'm just having a little bit of difficult time getting this. So go ahead, take over. <laughs> I'm saying that inside. And when I do that, you humble yourself to him. <laughs> he takes over. Yeah. And immediately he says, let me teach this with you. Ooh. Now, not that he wasn't before, but sometimes he takes over. So favor gives you God's assistance and preferential treatment in all aspects of life. And you can expect that and you can speak that. Yep. It's so good. Um, I like to say too, I wrote one th other thing down that I think is really important. Favor, write this down. Favor is part of your inheritance. When Jesus came in, he is favor, he is grace. It's part of your inheritance and it can grow and increase continually as you acknowledge it, decree it and expect it. Did you get that? You acknowledge the favors there you decree you yeah. have the favor and then you expect the favor yeah. in every aspect of your life all day long. We are going to become the most favor minded people around and God loves it. He loves it. All right. So let's go to our next scripture. Let's go to our next scripture here. And we're going to talk about this for now. It's uh, let's go to John 14. John 14. Now we're going to get into some scriptures here. Oh, I don't have my watch on. <laughs> some scriptures here. Okay. 
John 14, these are all things Jesus said. He said, he who has commandments, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Now, remember what we just read about when you consider your ways, when you hear instruction and you get understanding, all of that's going to increase favor. So now we're going to instruct you right here from the word. We're going to consider our ways. We're going to love the way God wants us to love. And we're going to do what Jesus is telling us to do here. And when you understand that, favor is going to increase. So he says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. I used to read that and go, no, wait a minute. You love everybody. Don't you? You love everybody. He said, yes, I love everybody unconditionally. But he said, you know, my love for you can actually grow. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. You know, you can be favored by God and be the favorite of God. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that are loved by God. God loves everybody, but not everybody has the same amount of favor. Right. Because they don't love God back the way they should, or they don't heed his commands, or they... They don't heed his instruction and he still always loves them, but they never get into the fullness of favor and blessing. Yeah. And I don't know about you. I want the fullness yeah. of the blessing. I want the high esteem favor. Yeah. I just don't want common favor. I want the ultimate high esteem favor. Mary was highly favored, not because she was special, but because she was willing and obedient and the lord knew she was going to absolutely believe and trust what he asked her to do with a willing heart yeah. and even though she didn't even understand any of it she chose to believe and receive by faith and honor what he asked her to do and she said so let it be according and as soon as she said that that favor increased and even though she was highly favored, she actually went into higher favor because of her obedience. Right. She didn't have to be, but she chose to. So when God does that to us and we obey him, favor increases just like it did with Mary. And I want to be highly favored. How about you, Sarah? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's your answer. So, and he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. I love that. That's a great word. And we'll talk more about that. Let's go to our next scripture. Let's go to our next uh, three or four. We're going to go through. This. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, one of his commandments is this. This is my commandment that you love me and love one another. That's a commandment. Now, commandments... The word command means strong, assertive. Write that down. Strong and assertive. And it's a privilege. It's a strong, assertive privilege to do something God wants that will bring forth his life and blessing in fullness. It's good, isn't it? It is good. That's pretty good. That's not even in my notes. <laughs> so, Sarah, would you read that back? Just read it back to the people. If you love me, keep my commandments. Let me do the next line. Yeah. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. So that means the Lord says, first, if you love me, keep the command I'm giving you, and then I... I'm going to pray and give you another help where he's going to help you to carry out these commands. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It is. He says, I know what I'm asking you to do is not going to be natural. It's going to take the Holy Spirit and the power and faith and for you to believe. But I'm going to even send you a helper because I want you to get this. I love you so much. I want you to get the fullness of my blessing and the fullness of the privilege of carrying out these commands. And I want to let you know that when you do whatever I ask you to do, it's going to be so powerful. It's going to bless your life so much and bring so much joy and favor to you 
that I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to help you and make sure that he will assist you and keep you at every point. And what was that definition I gave? Go ahead and read that out to them again. This is what the command. Which one? The command. The strong and assertive privilege to do something that God has asked you to do. That's right. It's a strong and assertive privilege that God has asked you to do. So when he says in one of his commands, love me and love one another, that commandment of love means we can either choose to do it or not to do it. But if we choose to do it and know that we're supposed to do it, then his love and favor will increase in our life. That's his promise. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 7. I want to show you how exciting it is and how God views you when you start to understand this. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God. He's the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him. So God's saying, I'm going to be faithful. If I ask you to do anything and you are willing to do it and you obey it, my covenant blessing upon you is going to be that I will be merciful to you. I will be kind to you. I will show favor to you. I will do amazing things for you for the rest of your life. And then he says, and keep his commandments. So there it is again. Now let's go to our next verse. Deuteronomy 28. Now it shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Why? Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So, when we diligently obey, so the word diligent means to make every effort to be obedient when God asks us to do something. So if God says, love me with all your heart, we need to choose to love him. If God says, love your enemies, we need to choose to love your enemies. See, everything is a choice after he tells us. So as long as I choose to listen and heed instruction and obey it, then I'm going to increase in love and favor and blessing everywhere I go. So when you follow the word of the Lord, favor increases in your life. So what we said earlier is when you give, when God says, give thanks, and that's an instruction. See, these are all instructions. Come into my gates with thanksgiving. That's an instruction. Give thanks in all things. That's an instruction. In all things, give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. That's instruction. See, all through the word of God, he's saying, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Continually, he gives. So that's an instruction. And it's it's not so much a command per se, but in actuality, we should treat everything as a command yeah. because we know if we do take it casually, there's a good probably chance that we're not going to do it. And it's a privilege. It's and it's, not, a, it's, a privilege yeah, it's a privilege and an honor to align ourselves and love God because he loved us. And if God's asking us to give thanks, we should get on that thank train. Right. Get on the thank train. <laughs> thank train. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> For you're a good God, for you're a great God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. See, you now that took what? A minute? But you can do that. Sing praise. Sing thanks with a grateful heart. I love you, Lord. See, all those little things you can do. Open a little psalm and start singing it out to God. Don't matter. Oh, but I'm not this. Don't say what you're not. You already are a praiser. God called you a praiser. You're a worshiper. You're a thankful. You're a thankful person. Just get it out. 
God's already put it in you. Yep. Just let it out. I give you thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks because of all he's done. Just do it. God will bless you. All right. So every day when we <laughs> do these things that God instructs us, these commands, things will happen. God says to love him with all your heart. I love you, Lord. I bless you. Lord. Heed the instruction. Obey the instruction. And favor will start to come. Now, when you become favor-minded and you get this revelation of favor, see, it's one thing to know about favor. It's another thing to have this understanding of favor. And when you become favor-minded with this revelation and, de and this declaration of favor, what starts to happen to your mind, you start to think like favor. Right. You become favor-minded. You start to know the things that I'm speaking to you now and I'm repeating to you now. And you'll start to have a picture of this coming every day in your life. That you start to expect favor, preferential treatment. You expect things to happen like that. You become like divine privileges are coming forth today for me. Hallelujah. Preferential treatment is coming forth. You're becoming favor-minded. When you walk into that doctor's office the next day, while you're sitting, you're saying, Lord, thank you. I have favor here. I have favor in this situation. I have favor with this doctor. I have favor with whatever he's going to tell me or she's going to tell me. I have favor. I expect you to move upon them and give me the favor you want. Mm -hmm. Not what they want to tell me. You're going to tell me what you're going to tell them what you want me to hear because right. I'm favor minded. And thank you that I favor that I don't sit in the waiting room a long time. <laughs> and I have favor for that. <laughs> And you know what? Sometimes when you're in an airport or you're looking for a <laughs> parking place, ask God, thank you for yeah. your favor. And he can move you right up in front of that yeah. line. <laughs> but you can have favor at your work. You can get promotion in your work. You got to pray it and expect it. Yeah. Speak favor, favor, favor. You know what else favor can do? Are you ready for this? I'll give you some benefits of being favor minded. You can have an increase in assets that you have. God's favor can bring increase even in assets that you have uh, god's favor can absolutely bring recognition to you when it's least likely yeah god's favor will cause battles that you're in for god to stand up and fight for you yeah. because you know you have favor and you've been obedient to decree to him how much you love him and give thanks that you have a right to expect god's favor in your biggest fight that's true and he will fight for you i feel the anointing i'm getting Me really too. kind of charged up here go for it not only that god's favor will bring to you supernatural increase <laughs> in finances i don't know how he does it but he can do it yeah supernatural increase in it and you know what i would like to say this lastly we can expect great victories when you have favor in the face of the longest odds that are against you. Yeah. Woo, I feel the anointing. Yeah. No matter yeah. what the odds are against you right now, I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what your finances say. All these things have a voice. Your circumstances, the problem that you're facing, the trial you may be in, they all have People. a voice. Yep. People, they're all trying to talk to you. I want to tell you today, God says you have favor and his voice is louder than any of those voices. And the voice of the Lord, when you obey that, your God is going to raise you up high above all those voices. And you're going to see the blessings of God overtake you because his voice you've been obedient to and he will rise up. And don't be discouraged. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep saying every day, thank you, Lord. I have your favor on my life. Say it, say it, say it. And when you do that, God will bring increase. So whenever we do what God wants us to do, it increases favor in our life. So we need to choose to be obedient, choose to be consistent in that obedience, and choose to make sure that what we say lines up with what God wants us to say. And when we do that and heed that instruction, you will have an amazing increase of favor 
and blessing on your life everywhere you go. I feel an anointing right now to say to you, favor is upon you. Favor is in you. Favor surrounds you. Favor is protecting you. And favor goes before you. And favor is coming into every situation in your future Thank you. that you are favored by God and it is increasing that you are going to see preferential treatment in your life you're going to have outcomes that are going to come quicker than you thought could ever happen you're going to see favor protect you and keep you and every circumstance is going to bow its knee to the favor that is upon you just like on Joseph just like on David just like on Jesus it's going to be on you, Thank you because you are absolutely highly favored by the Father and by Jesus Christ himself. I thank you, Lord, for your favor right now, for your blessing and positioning right now. Every person this year, you are positioning them for the ultimate favor of their destiny, yes. of their purpose, and of their plan. And no matter where they are today, I thank you that you're moving them out of and into your favor, your promotion, your plan, and their ultimate destiny. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. And in Jesus' name, every hindrance must go. Every uh, demonic influence must go. Thank you. Everything that is trying to hold back your favor and your blessing must go right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we give you praise and thank you, Father. Father, I thank you that we know today we've all messed up, but it's not our mess up. It's not our mess up that's hurting us. It's when we don't listen to you and trust you you, and not get the fullness of your blessing. That's the real thing that we don't want to mess up. We want everything you have. So wherever we messed up, we're sorry. But we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For changing us and helping us to be willing and obedient today to do everything you want us to do. Thank you for your umbrella of protection that is over everybody today at Unite. Yes, Everybody that's going to hear this, we thank you for your umbrella of protection, for your provision, and your peace over, over every home. We speak to every circumstance, every situation, every voice. Yes, sir. It must bow its knee. Lord, you be an adversary to those adversaries. Your word said you'll be an enemy to every enemy, and you will take up their cause. And we praise you and thank you for it. And I bless everyone today. We thank you for every person today. And we give you all the glory and all the honor today yes, for what you did in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Do you want to pray for people fighting any sickness? Yeah, we COVID. can. Okay. So uh, we just want to lift up anyone who's fighting any kind of sickness, especially COVID. Um, so I just really sense to do that. So um, we just, Lord, come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and anyone who's fighting or battling any kind of COVID or any kind of sickness, we curse it at the root in Jesus name. And we command that sickness, that disease, that infection to bow to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we release your healing power and your healing presence over every person, over every uh, cell, over every system, over every organ, in the name of Jesus. I release the resurrection power and the resurrection life over every person, Lord, over every person. And in the name of Jesus, uh, I just see, um, just like when um, Jesus went in and laid hands on Peter's mother-in-law, that fevers are going right now, that sickness is going right now, and that people are arising, like it says in uh, Acts 9, that it says, uh, uh, Talitha Kumi, which means little girl, rise up. So we just thank you, God, for that in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God. Thank you, God, for fresh hope in these situations, and that by your stripes, 
All your people are healed. That's your heart, Lord. That's the price you paid. And we say thank you for that. And I thank you for the favor in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We release that favor over their bodies. That the favor's the front guard and the rear guard. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we just want to say that that favor and that health that's coming to you right now is stronger than anything you're battling. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Father. We give you glory for the result. Thank you, Lord. In advance, we give you thanks that it is done. We give you thanks, Lord, that your word is working every day continually. And that every day as they give thanks to you and say, thank you, Lord, that I'm healed. And thank you for your favor on my life as they decree that. We thank you, Lord, that manifestation is coming forth quickly, quickly, quickly in Jesus' name. And I actually see the fire of God's love burning up things around you guys. So um, I don't know exactly what everyone's fighting, but I see the fire of God's love burning up those things and causing them to go. So we just thank you, God. And I just release that fire in the name of Jesus over every person in Jesus name that things are going that do not belong. And I thank you, Lord, for that purifying fire, that zeal, that burning love, Lord, in Jesus name, that you are a zealous God, you are a consuming fire. So I thank you, God, for each and every life that you're touching them right now. Touch them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whew, I felt that. All right. We want to just, uh, before we finish out today, uh, we want to give you a few things. One, we want to thank everybody again for your faithful giving. And you know, we're going to talk about the importance of faithfulness next week. When you are faithful, and faithful means to be consistent, when you are faithful to do what God asks you to do, it is amazing what happens. So, Thank you for you being faithful, coming on here every week, you know, praying for us and we're praying for you faithfully. And also when you give faithfully and consistently, the Bible says that when you are consistent, that God himself rebukes, Jesus Christ rebukes the devourer himself over your storehouse. And he speaks a blessing himself over you. It doesn't get much better than that. It's one thing if I do, but when he does, that's because he loves not only a cheerful giver, but those who are faithful. And the Bible says when you are faithful with what is God's and everything we have is God's, we don't own anything. He owns everything. But in his word, he says, if you give to me back to what I've given to you, then he will bless you. And he, the Bible says he will not only bless you, he will do great and mighty things with that giving so so today as you give we want to say blessings to you thanks to you and thanks to the lord for you and for all the lives that are being changed sarah will tell you again each week we seed after we get the tithe in from the church we seed it into other things and people each week too so thank you for your faithfulness so if you want to give again we just say go to the website uh where it says give on there. That's all you have to do is click give. And thank you for every week being so faithful. Uh, we trust in God ourselves every week. We by faith give every <laughs> week like you do. Our, our trust is in God. He is our supply and he is our need. The Bible says he will supply our need according to his riches and glory. And so we know it's a difficult time for a lot of people. And uh, so for you that have given faithfully in season, out of season, we are so thankful. And most of all, God is absolutely going to bless you big time. I really believe that. And he has. So we want to thank you for that. Yeah. And just uh, go to the website. Just hit the give button. Also, you can send it in if you want. There's an address there. On there it goes. Yeah. So there is a thing for giving online. You can also text on your phone. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. Just text give to that phone number. Then there'll be a little form to come up and you can fill that out. And then once you do that, you don't have to do it anymore. Then you'll just have a little give on your phone and you can give a certain amount, a dollar figure just on the send button, boom. And whatever you give, it's already done. All right, so Sarah's gonna 
share what we've been giving to this past yeah. week? Um, so uh, in the past, I think it's two weeks, we've given, we've sewn into Transformation Church. They had a food bank and outreach in South Philly. So we uh, sewed into that. We sewed into um, an organization, um, a mission. It's called Core Love. And they have five, uh, I think five orphanages and their mission is to, um, because not every child can be fostered or adopted, to provide orphanages that um, give clean water, food, medical needs, education, jobs, and most of all, they share the love of Christ with these children. So we sewed into that. We also sewed into A01 Camp Conquerors, which, um, is part of the Carson Wentz uh, Foundation that helps children overcome life-threatening diseases and also equips them with the love of Jesus. And we also sewed in to Stop for the One out of um, Iris, Iris Global. We have a child there, like all of us, Unite, um, named Elton, and we sew into him once a month. He's, I think, either four or five now. I have to find out when his really? birthday is. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And the other uh, wonderful announcement that I wanted to share, um, I, well, first I wanna say you guys will all, like when we go to heaven, all these people, like all these kids in these orphanages are gonna come up and say to you personally, thank you for helping change my life. So I just want you guys to have that mindset about what it actually goes to. And it's not a dollar figure, it's these kids are gonna come up and say, you changed my life and I'm able to be in heaven because of what you did and how you share the love of God with me. So that's what really this is all about. It's, it's not even about the money. So it's about the love of God. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, and on that note, uh, we uh, have a prayer meeting on February 17th at noon. Please come, please join in. There's a link in the email. Um, the Lord's been talking to me about uh, the subject for at least a month, and he's given me like powerful, powerful downloads. So I really encourage you guys to come. It's going to be a powerful meeting. I even feel the anointing talking about it. Invite friends, um, but we're really going to press into God. It's an incredible time of prayer right now, and uh, we don't want to miss this time is so precious and so sacred about what God wants to do in this season and set us up and set up the kingdom for the future. So um, I just encourage you to come invite friends and um, it is on the Tuesday email link. So um, you can just click the button the same way as you do here. Um, and it's the same link every, every month. So we're excited about that. And we're thankful for um, the people who've continued to pray, you know, prayers key. It says my house shall be a house of prayer. So we are a house of prayer. So we thank God for that. Amen. So everybody, we want to say to you today that we are so thankful for you. And I just want to say that even right now in the midst of this, wherever we are pandemic situation, no matter where you are right now, <laughs> God is protecting you, keeping you. And I keep seeing this whole little umbrella over everybody today that God is just all around you and surrounding you. And you are surrounded with his love, his presence, his favor. And I want you to get a picture today. You are surrounded and protected. And God's bringing us through. And as we come through, each step that we take, just like Joseph, we're coming through to that place that God ultimately has for us. It feels like, you know, we've gone from the pit to the prison. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, then he went through the house and he goes all the way through the prison. But then he comes out of that prison, boom, and he comes all the way out into this palace. So we're coming out into something special. And uh, as a, a group at Unite, and we're excited about the future that God has for us, yeah. for where we're going. Uh, we're seeing some new people each week come on. So we just have a great, great expectation for all of you and for all of uh, the friends of Unite as well. So we want you to all be in prayer every day for God to continue to manifest his purpose and his plan for you, but also for Unite. 
Keep praying yeah. for Sarah and I as we are going forth that the right strategy is going to come forth because I know things are going to be unique and different <laughs> in the future. It's going to yeah. be a different way things are done. Yeah. But you know what? We want all of you involved. We, we want to come up with some strategies and plans of how to keep everybody engaged, involved, interactive, so that we can see the plans that God has, the way we can build communion. And, and, and I just want to say that next week, uh, I'm going to talk about in Acts 2, where they broke bread together, did communion together, and all that, but they increased with favor with God and man. So we're going to talk about Acts 2 next week, and I believe that's going to be part of us going forth, that we're going to be doing things like they're in Acts 2 together. So not that that's all of it, but it just is part of what we yeah. can see in the future. But anyway, um, before we go today, uh, do you have any words you want to speak? Or uh, I wanted to know who was the new person that was on. I saw that. I don't know if they're still there. Or did they? Come I don't. In? No, they're not there. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure we said hi to them. Uh, but there's. I don't know who this number is. There might be a new person. Eight five six nine zero four eleven sixty. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Hi, welcome. <laughs> who is it? I don't know. But we welcome you. Okay, good. Hello. <laughs> and we're thankful. You're grateful. Are they unmuted? I don't know. Uh, maybe we could unmute them so, say, so we can say hello. Okay. Oh, oh, hi. This is Judy Bray, and I couldn't get you oh. on, on the computer on Zoom. I'm having so much, so many problems with Zoom right now. Hey, Judy. So I'm on the phone. Yeah. Oh, good. So you got on. See, Judy, God loves you. Made sure that you got to talk. <laughs> yeah. So, Father, we pray that that Zoom issue is going to be rectified. Yes, and that Lord. next week, Judy will be on the computer in Jesus' name. We can see her. Oh, silently. thank you. Thank you. That's what I need. <laughs> so did you, were, you, were you able to hear everything today, Judy? Yes. Yeah. I heard everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. I'm glad. Uh, of course, it doesn't matter if you heard everything. It's fine. Yes. Okay. Oh, no, I did. And thank you so much for every week that we hear you, both of you. Thank you. And thank for you. your blessing. You. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're a blessing, too. Let's go up here. Who's this 610? Those are, that's Barb. No, that's uh, one of them's Daryl. You go to Daryl all the time. No, one that's of them's okay. Daryl, and that's but Melinda. Every, no, but I was going to say, everybody in the 610s, <laughs> We say blessing to all of you this week and everybody else that's on today. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for each one of Jen them. Jen Kelly's probably a 610 too. Yeah, I'm Jen's guessing. a 610. I don't know. Uh, great to see Lauren. Blessings to you. And to everybody that's on, we praise God for each one of you. So next Sunday, Lord willing, we'll get there through the week. This is going to be a don't forget prayer this week. Yes. So next Sunday, we're going to talk a little bit about the faithful, how, how it's to be fit when you're faithful, how to be faithful that releases favor. And with that, we're going to talk about a little bit of ways that we're going to be interacting in the future. So it's going to be a faithful future type of Sunday. It's going to be very good. So make sure that you invite a friend. And we want to believe God for some great and mighty things. Yep. Father, we just speak great and mighty things and increase of blessing and favor over everybody this week. Thank you for your protection, your provision, and your peace. We praise you and thank you, Lord, for bringing forth all the things. In Psalms 84, your word says you withhold no good thing from those who love you. So we just praise you and thank you for the good things and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with everyone this week in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Happy Valentine's Day, Happy guys. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. You are very loved. Thanks for we love uh, you. Thanks for all your love, all your support, all your kindness. You are absolutely the best. Don't accept anything else. That's right. So we love you. Have a super blessed day. Super blessed day. And see you at the prayer meeting. See you at the prayer meeting and see you next Sunday. <laughs>